Welcome back to Network Africa. Africa and Envoys at the United Nations are optimistic that Nigeria's presidency of the UN Security Council provides an opportunity to give attention to the security crisis undermining the growth of the continent. However, to make this happen, Africa must seize the moment to lead the discussions on issues affecting her and the Security Council. Well, South Africa's ambassador to the United Nations, Kingsley Mamabolu, told Channels Television during a visit to the Security Council president, that's Nigeria's Professor Joy Ogu, that resolving the crisis in Africa should take the front burner. We're very happy that uh, it's Nigeria that's chair of the Security Council this month. Um, it means uh, the African issues that uh, will be discussed this month in the Security Council will receive the attention that it, they warrant. One issue that is really standing out is the issue of South Sudan. Um, the, hopefully an agreement is being signed. We know that the negotiations are going on and that um, we needed to discuss that. Africa should take leadership on all these issues um, and not wait until other people decide to jump in and take that leadership on our behalf. It would be important to say, as Africans, we should lead what the Security Council would be discussing on the 25th, um, an indication as to how, in the process of resolving the problem as Africans, we would want to see international support uh, backing up the efforts that Africa is making in the con on the continent, on the regional level. We know that there are all these efforts. Uh, we've been calling on people to create space for Africa to make sure that uh, Africans can solve the problems. But that entails Africans taking a lead and giving an indication to the rest of the world as to what kind of support we would want to have. Our correspondent at the United Nations headquarters in New York, Adeshewa Josh, joins me live on the program. You're welcome to Network Africa, Adeshewa. Thank you so much, Angel. Now, what are some of the issues being discussed at the UN Security Council today? As a matter of fact, ongoing as we speak is uh, the issue of allowing regional organizations to take the lead when it comes to resolving uh, crisis in Africa. And of course, the rest uh, in all the um, um, continents around the world. Let regional organizations in those continents take the lead first when it comes to resolving the crisis. Uh, um, the UN Secretary General, back in Moon, is in this meeting, and he has briefed the rest of the council members on what his thoughts are. And now, one after the other, they are responding and they are also proposing how they want regional organizations to uh, take up the responsibility. Of course, chairing that meeting is Professor Joy Ogu, who would then eventually give her own final say and hopefully speak on behalf of the rest of the African countries. We can only wait and see uh, what the outcome of that meeting would be and what the consensus of the council would be on, on that issue. Now, Adeshawa, the failure of South Sudan's government to sign a peace deal in Addis Ababa is a big story at the moment. What is the UN Security Council saying about this? You know, I've been listening all along to the uh, other and to, to analysts on the show, you know, just going on and on about this deal. Um, the truth is, they still have two weeks, you know, because the council is sitting uh, very well on this issue on the 25th. And everyone was actually hoping that the deal would be signed and so everyone can move on. So now that the deal has not been signed, it's a big issue. Everyone is stomaching their reactions. No one has officially said anything. We can only wait till 25th to see what comes out. And that's if uh, the next round of negotiations prove fruitful. If they do prove fruitful, then of course we know where, uh, what the reaction of the United Nations Security Council would be. If it breaks down again, that's the question. What next? Uh, there are feelers, uh, you know, that the United Nations, I mean, that's the United States, is already drafting uh, um, some sort of sanctions. We, we don't, we've not received any uh, official confirmation about that. But, I mean, like, you know, uh, Tanza said, Mr. Tanza said, everybody has grown very impatient with South Sudan and uh, they just want this over with. 
at this time. So 25th is almost here. Two weeks, hopefully, these people can resolve the personality crisis and then put South Sudan back on the path of democracy. Thank you so much, Adeshawa. We'll keep in touch. And on the 25th, we'll call you again. Thank you. For the second time in one month, South African anti apathy campaigner and veteran cleric Desmond Tutu has been admitted to hospital, this time for inflammation. Earlier this month, the 83-year-old was released from hospital after being treated for a recurring infection related to the prostate cancer he has been fighting for 18 years. Tutu, a Nobel Peace Laureate, retired from public life in 2010, but he has been speaking out on a wide range of issues, including corruption among South Africa's political elites. The president of Gabon, Ali Bongo, has vowed to give away all the money he inherits from his father to set up a foundation for the country's youth. His father's will, who ruled for 41 years until his death in 2009, is yet to be settled. But he reportedly left a fortune worth many millions of dollars. French judges are currently probing the Bongo family over alleged embezzlement, accusations which they strongly deny. Gabon is a major oil producer, but the World Bank says a third of its population live in poverty. Ali Bongo won presidential elections in September 2009, making him the country's third president since independence from France in 1960. The southern African nation of Angola has been described as an economic miracle for its rapid transformation after a brutal civil war. But critics of Angola's long-time government, which has drawn fire for being increasingly repressive, say the high rises and new developments that glitter in Angola's capital have come at a very high cost. The viewer's Anito Powell tells us more. Angola has transformed itself in the last decade from an impoverished, war-torn nation into an economic powerhouse. A new book details this incredible process. Angola had a civil war that lasted for 41 years and that killed a million people. Um, by the end of it, obviously, Angola was in, in tatters. What happened over the, in the, the subsequent decade was absolutely extraordinary. The economy of Angola uh, multiplied tenfold. It was the greatest growth story in the world uh, in the early 21st century. But Angolan activists say that development hasn't benefited everyone. Angola is one of the world's most unequal societies. It was necessary, but the problem is the way it was done. It came at the cost of a lot of people have been completely marginalized and excluded from this process. And activists say human rights and free expression have been stifled along the way. Journalist and activist Rafael Marquez de Moraes says his critical coverage of the government is what really landed him in court for defamation. He is critical of the development brought about by Angola's longtime president, in power since 1979. What development? That's the question we have to ask. Uh, when you build high-rises in Africa, especially in countries like Angola, where there's so many, people tend to believe that the high-rises uh, translate into development, but that's not true. It has the highest child mortality rate in the world, worse than Afghanistan. What development is that, that we cannot provide the basics uh, to save children? Angola is now Sub-Saharan Africa's third largest economy that's largely been driven by oil. But that, say activists, is not enough. And they worry about what the future holds for Angola. Well, coming up in a moment, the Inspector General of Police here in Algeria calls for community policing. Please stay with us for details. <laughs> 